Hello, everyone. In this presentation, I'll be talking about how to implement LOSC and atomic copy using this pointer width comparison swap. The goal of this work is to provide some useful building blocks for designing simple and efficient shared memory algorithms. So the overall structure of our algorithm is, uh, looks like this. We'll first use compare and swap to implement weak LOSC, and then we'll use that to implement atomic copy. And finally, we'll use atomic copy to implement full LOSC. So LOSC has already proven to be useful, a useful primitive for many uh, concurrent algorithms. And throughout this talk, I hope to convince you that atomic copy is a useful tool to have as well. Ideally, we would like both LOSC and atomic copy uh, to be done and to be implementable in constant time so that they can be freely used without any, uh, any time overhead. I'll first start off by introducing these primitives and explaining why they are important. And then we'll look at our implementation of uh, LOSC and atomic copy. And finally, we'll conclude with some applications of these building blocks and discuss some interesting extensions in future directions. So compare and swap forms the built backbone of many shared memory algorithms. It takes three parameters, a memory location, an expected value, and a new value. It atomically compares the value at the memory location with the expected value and writes in a new value only if this comparison succeeds. So if the comparison succeeds, it also returns true and we say the cast operation is successful. Otherwise, it returns false, and we say uh, it is unsuccessful. LOSC performs a similar function to compare and swap, except it avoids the ABA problem. Uh, so the LO operation behaves like a read, and it simply returns the current value of the object. Uh, an SC operation by some process P, let, let's say P, um, a process P wants to perform an SC operation that writes in a new value. Then this SC will succeed um, only if there has not been a successful SC on the same object since the last LO by process P. So in this example, um, process one's SC operation will succeed, whereas process two will fail because there is a successful SC between, between process two's LO and SC. It turns out that LO SC is more intuitive to work with than, than compare and swap. And for this reason, it's been used a lot throughout the literature, including for concurrent data structures, universal constructions, and also for implementing other primitives such as fetch and add. However, despite the usefulness of LOSC, none of the primitives we have to, uh, none of the machines we have today support it. And this motivates a lot of the work on simulating LOSC from compare and swap. So this table summarizes some of the implementations that exist in the literature. For time complexity, we are counting both local and shared memory instructions. And for space complexity, we are also counting both local and shared variables. So there are several desirable properties that a simulation can have. First, all operations should take constant time, as mentioned before. Second, it should also be space efficient, meaning that the space usage should be linear and a number of LOSC objects, plus some additive overhead that is shared across all the objects. In this table, I highlighted all the implementations that satisfy this definition of space efficiency. And finally, the simulation should ideally avoid using unbounded sequence numbers. In some of these algorithms, you could argue that it's unlikely for one of these sequence numbers to overflow in practice, but in theory, it's nicer to avoid them altogether. So we present the first algorithm that achieves all three of these properties. And furthermore, our algorithm only requires pointer width a single word compare and swap. <clears throat> so our implementation of LOSC from CAS relies heavily on a new primitive that we defined called single writer copy. As the name suggests, this primitive lets you atomically copy from an arbitrary memory location into a special destination object. We say it is single writer because only one process can be writing or copying into the destination object at a time, but any number of processes can be concurrently reading from the destination object. Our destination object supports three operations, read, write, and SW copy, which stands for single writer copy. In our paper, we implement all three operations in constant time using m plus p squared space uh, for m destination objects. So furthermore, our implementation only uses single word, read, write, and compare and swap. 
And um, and I was actually a little surprised to see that atomic copy uh, is was even implementable in constant time. So we believe that this primitive will be useful because a lot of difficulties we face when designing log-free algorithms arise from not being able to uh, access two different memory locations at the same time. And atomic copy solves a special case of this problem that we believe shows up quite a bit. Uh, in the next part of this talk, I'll show how to use this primitive to transform a well-known log-free LOSC algorithm into a weight-free algorithm. So I'll begin by describing how, how the log-free alg algorithm works. For those of you that are familiar with hazard pointers, this algorithm essentially uses a level of indirection with hazard pointers to recycle memory. For simplicity, I'll be assuming that each process alternates between performing LL and SC. And this means that you can't have nested LL SC pairs by a single process. In the full version of the paper, we saw how to generalize our algorithm to avoid this assumption. Uh, but for now, for simplicity, I'll just be assuming this throughout the talk. Uh, so in the log free algorithm, the, the LLSC object stores a pointer to a buffer, and the point and the buffer uh, that it points to stores the actual value of the object. So to perform an LO operation, you simply read the uh, read the pointer, and then you would announce the pointer uh, to prevent the buffer from getting collected as you read from it. And then finally, you would complete the operation by reading the buffer and then returning its value. So now to perform an SC operation, you would first allocate a new buffer and then initialize the buffer with the value you wish to write. And then you use a compare and swap to change x to point to your new buffer. And the old value of this compare and swap is the buffer that you read um, during your previous LO operation. Uh, so now for memory reclamation, if the compare and swap succeeds, then you recycle the old buffer um, that x pointed to before your compare and swap. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail about how the recycle method is implemented, but it basically maintains a list of buffers to recycle. And once in a while, it scans the announcement array and frees any buffer that is not uh, that is not announced. And this is why it's important to announce a buffer on line two of the LO operation. So the algorithm, this algorithm has some nice properties. The LL takes constant time, and if uh, and it's possible to implement the recycle operation so that the SC operation has constant time as well. And you can also show that you only need uh, M plus P squared buffers to implement uh, M LOSC objects. Uh, so it's space efficient. But for those of you who are familiar with hazard pointers, you probably already see that there's a problem with the LL operation. So what could go wrong is that, let's say process P1 performs uh, a, a read of X and it pauses before announcing the buffer that it saw. Now process P, P2 can come along and change X to point to a different buffer and then go on to, and then go on to recycle the buffer that process P1 is about to read from. So the recycle operation scans the announcement array and sees that the buffer has not been announced. So it decides to free the buffer. And now process P1 wakes up and announces the buffer, but at this point it's too late. And then on line three, it, it ends up reading from a buffer that has already been freed. So a common way to fix this problem is by having process one reread X after announcing. If the current value of X is different from what it announced, then process one restarts from the beginning and this switches the problem. However, now the algorithm is just lock free instead of constant time because there's no bound on how many times a process might have to restart during the LL. So this general style of algorithm has been used to solve many problems and it's not just limited to LLSC. Researchers have developed several ways of making this pattern weight free. However, all the existing methods either require unbounded sequence numbers or they don't scale well with the number of LOSC objects. Um, and they are also special pur purpose to their specific problems. So let's go back to the problem again. So notice that lines one and two of the LO operation basically just copy the value from X into the natural array. And then recall that the problem only, only happens when lines three and four of the SC operation happen in between lines one and two of the LL. So we can fix this problem by simply replacing the first two lines with an atomic copy. And this would mean that we also need to replace the announcement array with an array of destination objects. So with this change, we don't need to restart on line three anymore. So the linearization point of the SC operation would be at the compare and swap 
on line three. And the linearization point of the LL would be at the um, single writer copy operation. If we implement the recycle method properly, then we can show that all operations take constant time and the space usage is, is still m plus p squared because it only takes p squared space to implement the p destination objects used by the natural array. So now we've seen that, that atomic copy leads to a very easy implementation of LOSC from compare and swap. And hopefully this gives you some sense for why we believe the primitive is so useful. And now we focus on actually implementing this atomic copy primitive. Uh, so it turns out that implementing atomic copy runs into some APA problems. So it's helpful to first implement a weaker form of LOSC. A weak LOSC object supports two operations, SC, which behaves just like before, and weak LL. The difference is that weak LL is allowed to return, is allowed to fail uh, if a successful SC operation linearized during its execu uh, execution interval. A failed weak LL returns a special value indicating that it failed. And this definition is actually weaker than previous definitions, which require that a failed LO operation return the process ID of the SC operation that made it fail. However, by being less restrictive, this version of weak LO can be implemented more efficiently and with better theoretical properties. So um, weak LO is actually very easy to implement uh, by starting with the log-free algorithm presented earlier and then making some small changes. So notice that if we find out on line three that the value of the current value of x is different from the one we saw on line one, then between lines one and three, uh, a success an SC operation must have linearized, which changed the value of x. And this means that instead of restarting the weak LL on line three, we can, we can simply return a value indicating that it failed. So this algorithm can actually be extended to support multi-word weak LOSC using your single word compare and swap uh, by making the buffer span multiple words. So this works because you can prove that a read and a write from a buffer will never be concurrent with each other. And this means that the read and the write does not have to be done atomically. So this extension is important for our single writer uh, copy algorithm, which makes use of double word weak LOSC. Okay, so now the final step is to look at how we implement atomic copy using weak LOSC. So the destination objects are internally represented by two variables, D and O. D is a double word, uh, is a double word weak LOSC object that stores both the pointer and the value. And O is just the register. So now what are the high level ideas? Uh, so the first one is we'll guarantee that whenever the pointer field of D is null, then the value field will store the, store the current value of the object. And this means that if a read operation sees a null pointer field, then it can immediately return the value field. So in order for, it, uh, in order for this to work, uh, the read operation has to be able to uh, view the value field and the pointer field atomically, which is why we store them in the same double word LOSC object. Okay. So now if the value field, if the pointer field of D is not null, then that means that a single writer copy is in progress. Uh, so in this case, if a read operation sees it, then it will try to help uh, complete the single writer copy. So this kind of helping introduces uh, an APA problem. So that this is the reason why uh, the variable D has to be a weak LOSC object. Okay, so now there's still a few more problems to address. The first one is that the only way to view the contents of D is by using a weak LL. And this means that the read operation, uh, the read operation might never, uh, might always fail on this weak LL and it might never be able to see the contents. And, and another related problem is that, um, so supposing that the, the read oper operation is able to see the contents, it could be that the pointer it sees um, is always not null and it has to continuously help and, um, and it never sees a value that it can safely return. So to handle both of these problems, we, um, we introduced the register O, which, whose purpose is to store the previous value of the destination object. Okay, so this previous value is maintained um, by the update operations. So at the start of each single writer copy and each write operation, uh, it's, it's going to read the value field of D and then back it up into O. 
Okay, so normally it's not safe for the read operation to just directly return O uh, because it could be out of date. However, it's, it's, it's possible in two, um, in two special occasions. So the first one is if the read operation fails, uh, fails two different weak LLs, then that means that um, then we can show that these two weak LLs were interrupted by different single writer copy operations. And the value of O is updated in between these two, meaning that it's safe to return for the read operation. And so a similar case happens if the read operation tries to uh, help, uh, tries attempts helping twice and then fails in both attempts. Okay, so using putting all these high level ideas together, uh, we can show that our read, write, and SW copy can all be implemented in constant time using m plus p squared space for m destination objects. And furthermore, this implementation will only use single word, read, write, and compare and swap. Okay, so now we've seen how um, an, an overview of how all these steps work. There are a lot of details that I skipped over in these algorithms. Uh, so for example, for the LOSU algorithm, I didn't talk about how to handle multiple overlapping LOSU operations per process. Uh, and if you're interested, the full version, the full uh, versions of the algorithms can be found in the full version of our paper. In summary, we've shown that atomic copy can be used to easily make a lock-free LOSE algorithm weight-free. And the resulting weight-free algorithm shows that it's possible to solve the ABA problem efficiently without using double word cast or unbounded sequence numbers. In a separate paper, we used atomic copy to implement concurrent reference counting. And we actually performed some experiments in that paper and so that atomic copy can be practical as well. Also, Paul Kuhn wrote an interesting blog post on how to engineer fast, weight-free hazard pointers. And some of his implementations were based on variations of atomic copy. A direction that I think would be interesting to explore is that you can actually modify our single writer copy implementation so that it applies an arbitrary function to the value before writing it into the destination. This would make it behave more like a read modify write on two different memory locations, which sounds like it should be useful. So what we hope will be the impact of this work is that atomic copy or its extensions will make it easier to design log-free algorithms and also simplify their proofs of correctness because it limits the number of interleavings that you have to worry about. And that's it for this presentation. Uh, thank you for listening.